Good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. How are you all today? How has your day been? How has your week been? I pray all is well. I pray that you have been able to just enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Uh, just enjoy the, the, the small things God do. And I pray that you've been able to look at the big things as well. Uh, you know, I was telling a friend of mine today um, that, you know, you and I, we get so busy that sometimes we miss the things that God does on a regular basis. And when I was telling him some of the things, you know, at the time that I was, I was sitting there in line waiting to get my truck washed. <laughs> and I was just sitting there and I was just saying, you know, uh, we miss so many things that God do. You know, just for instance, just the breeze that, that blows on our face, um, you know, when we're out in the air. Uh, I was thinking about... You know, I told him, and one of the things I think about often, I think about sometimes, I don't know if you've ever done it, when you look up in the sky and you see clouds, um, I've done this as a kid. I would look up and it would be a one particular cloud that may look like something that I would like. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen it. Or you might look up and see a dolphin. Uh, you might look up and see a, a, a smiling face in the cloud. And the next person, if you're in a car, you'll say, hey, you see that smiling face right there? They say, I don't see it. Well, God did this smiling face just for you. And often you and I, I don't know about you, I can speak for me. Often we don't look at those things and we don't recognize the things God does just for us. I know myself personally, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a yard worker. I stay in the yard when I'm off. I'm doing different things. And there has been numerous times, more times that I can count on, on hands and feet where it's about to rain or storm. And I see the storm coming towards me. I can even sometimes hear the rain. And I ask God, that Lord, just let it. If, if I've asked God, please don't let it rain until I finish. Several, 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 several times. God will stop the rain as it gets to my yard and please I'm not lying. Try it for yourself. God has stopped the rain before it gets to my yard. And as soon as I finish cutting grass and I walk in the house, it downpours. God does those things just for us. He does those things for us. You know, when you just sit back and all of a sudden you see a bird and they just seem like it's singing a little song. That bird could have landed in so many different places. Why is it that the bird landed so you can see it? God's doing that just to show us to enjoy the little things. Matter of fact, the problem that you and I have, the things that God is showing us, we see it as little things, but they are actually big things. They are big things to remind us to just enjoy the current day we're living in. Enjoy the good things. Enjoy the breeze. Enjoy the, the rain. Um, there are some people that just love rain. So when you say, oh man, it's a bad, it's a gloomy day. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you. I stopped saying, oh man, it's, that's going to be a messy day. I stopped saying stuff like that. It definitely stopped saying it's going to be a bad day. You know why I stopped saying it? If I'm not waking up in hell, it's a great day. It is an awesome day. If I'm not waking up already in hell... It is a blessed day. It is a beautiful day. It is an outstanding. I got to go tell a Marine Corps term. It is an outstanding day. You know why? Because we got a chance once again to live another day. But not so much about the living. But we got another chance to get it right. So I challenge you to just stop. Just stop griping. Can we just stop griping? And complaining and just enjoy the goodness of the Lord. So on today, I pray you've gotten a chance to just regroup. Um, I pray that you've gotten a chance throughout this week to seek God and spend a little bit more time with God. Uh, just just enjoying the things. I mean, as you look around, yes, it's a pandemic. It's a lot of things. Yes, you can. I mean, good gracious. If you want to jump on the negative, there's a big ship full of people. That's going to help you get on that boat and enjoy the negative atmosphere. That's, I mean, misery loves company. There is a big yacht just waiting for you to join. 
But if you one that wants to jump and just and look and just enjoy the God, we got sunshine. I mean, it is an awesome day. So anyway, just take some time to just do that. You know, take some time to do that. You know, I, I'm just another thought that came to my mind. I know sometimes when you, you look at the clock at night and you say, you know what, man, I only have so many, so many hours to sleep. And then, and this is going to be a little comical for those, those that really know me. You already know my sense of humor. You sit back and you say, man, I only had about five hours to sleep. And I woke up at about two and a half hours and had to go to the bathroom. Well, you can look at that as a negative thing and say, man, I didn't even go back to sleep. You can look at that thing and say that was a negative thing, and some of you already know where I'm going. Or you can sit back and say, you know what, I could have laid there and wet myself. Now, which one would you rather have? So, anyway, just be grateful. <laughs> just be grateful. Anyway, tonight, God gave me Romans, the 12th chapter, and we're only looking at two verses. Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2. These are some uh, uh, quoted scriptures that you've heard on a regular basis. But God gave me this. And we're looking at spiritual trans transformation. I have been noticing some things that God has been pointing out. God has, has once again been dealing with our foundation. He's been dealing with our spiritual foundation because I don't know how many of you may have been taught the pure, true, I mean, unadulterated, as they say. They may have been taught the things of God from a child. I mean, spiritual things, and you may have a strong foundation in the Lord. I mean, one that's, I walk by faith, and you cannot tell me different. If that's, what, if that's you, hallelujah, I commend you. If you've been walking like that since age 8, 9, wonderful but many of us was giving the best that whomever had to give at that time but now looking back it was a little watered down and you may have built your whole entire um christian walk on something that really is kind of shallow and the problem with that is as god began to deal with you as god began to deal with you and trying to get you to grow He'll start showing you holes in the shallowness. He'll start showing you why the shallowness just is not enough. And he'll begin to get you to start digging more. He'll, want, he'll begin to get you to start uh, 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 spending more time with him. He'll start revealing stuff to you that man has not given you. And that's the beauty of walking with Jesus Christ and, and, and spending time with God because he'll begin to give you revelation on things that you've experienced. He'll begin to give you revelation on his word that will blow your earthly mind. It will blow your mind to the point that it's like, God, I thank you. I know for a fact you spoke to me. I know for a fact that you have given me this information. So I, I challenge you to... Begin to just spend more time with God. Get away from, cut the cell phone off. Uh, 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 get off the social media. I mean, get up before the kids get up. Get up before your husband get up. Get up before your wife get up. Spend some time with God and just not go begging. Don't go with a wish list. No, just go spending time with him, thanking him, and just, just say, God, what is it you want to tell me today? So anyway, looking at Romans, the 12th chapter, Verses 1 and 2 is what we're looking at. Verses 1 and 2 of Romans, the 12th chapter. I'm going to read through this, and then we're going to go into prayer. And then we're going to go back, and we're just going to let God just teach us some stuff. Amen? All right. Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2, it goes as follows. Therefore, this is out of the Good News Bible. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do, verse 2, do not conform to any longer to the pattern of this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for being God. I thank you for loving us. I thank you for just ministering to us, teaching us, God. I thank you, God, that you set aside time for us to come to you. And you, even if we ask, you remove all distractions. God, I thank you for all that you do, the things that we, that we witness and the things that we understand that you've done. And I thank you, God, for the things that we pay no attention to. God, I thank you for your grace, your mercy. God, I thank you for just giving us a purpose. God, I thank you for allowing us to, to be able to feel you, God. Nobody can tell me that you're not alive because I feel you. I feel your touch. I feel your hug. So, God, I thank you, God, for being active in my life. I thank you for being active in our lives. I thank you, God, for just showing up and proving that you are who you are. Thank you, God. Now I'm asking God, you teach us your word. Teach us in such a way, God, that we'll never forget it. We'll never lose it. God, I thank you. I can't have done. I know that you're going to do it. I trust and believe in all that you do. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We pray. All right. Looking back at Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2, it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, I'm going to read verse 1. It says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, <clears throat> to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy, pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. All right. And I know if you're reading out of the good news, uh, I mean, if you're reading out of the King James Version, it says something a little bit different. Um, but that's why I, I try to always say which version of the Bible I am reading. Amen. So looking at this, it says, therefore, I urge you when somebody's urging you to do something. It's not a lackadaisical type of situation. It's not a passive um, request. When I urge you to do something, it's meaning that this is so important. It's something that you need to take care of right now. It is it's dire need for you to fulfill the task. So when I see this writing and it says, uh, uh, Apostle Paul write this, wrote this, but uh, when I see this writing and it says, therefore, I urge you, brothers, this, and, and I have to say this again because it's okay. This is not just for men, brothers and sisters, okay? Uh, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. What does this mean? What does this mean? It's saying that holy, let me, let me keep reading. I, I, I offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. When you actually step back, and this is this is something that, and we're going to talk about this a little bit in verse 2. But when you actually sit back and realize, what are you capable of doing? All right. And I know somebody has said, man, hey, man, I done done this thing by myself. And, man, I built all of this. Let me bust your bubble. If God had not given you the strength, the breath, the heartbeat, um, the ability to accomplish the simplest of things of tying your shoes, brushing your teeth, standing up, blinking your eyes, you didn't do it. So when I look at the fact that it says, when I think about all that God does for me, when I think about literally, and I had, uh, I'm going to say this, because I'm trying to break this down on the most simplest of form, because seriously, some of us have spiritual arrogance. And when you have spiritual arrogance, we do not understand the things that God really has allowed us to be able to do. And I'm not saying this in a negative thing. I'm 
I'm not saying this to point fingers at anybody. I'm saying it as a period of ignorance, not knowing or not understanding that God is the one that's given us that ability because the world does not teach us that. And many of us grew up learning the things of the world because that's what's around us. Okay. So I'm not saying this to point finger. I'm not saying this as a bad, I'm not saying this as you, you heathen. I'm not saying none of that. What I'm saying to you are, is that um, we have to, many cases, disconnect from the world's way of thinking to actually see what it is that God is blessing us with. So when I say, when I hear this, therefore I urge you brothers, in view of God's mercy, God's mercy is only God that's still giving us the ability to stand up, to speak, to even scratch our face, to walk, to have a job, to have a home is God. It's not you. It's not me. It's God. It's only God that is giving us this ability to have these things. Amen. So when I look at that, then it says, therefore, I urge you, brothers, in the view of God's mercy. When we understand that maybe we have not given God the glory for doing these things for us. When we think about the fact that we have not even thanked God for the breath that we are taking in and blowing out, then it's God's mercy. Because if you give your child everything, if you don't have kids and you're giving your nieces and nephew every single thing that you can possibly think that they want and, and they ask for it and you running out there and getting it and they never tell you thank you. That's going to hurt your feelings. But when you think about that, God has the ability to stop you from breathing. When you think about God has the ability to remove your job, remove your car, remove your house, remove your ability to move your fingers. It's God that has the ability to stop all of that. I don't care how healthy you think you are. Then it's God's mercy that allows us to continue to move. And to do those things. So verse 1, I'm going back to it. Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. What is a living sacrifice? Well, when you understand the things of God and you begin to understand that, wait a minute, God has rules and regulations that he's already spit out in his word. He's already put it out in his word and told us and 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 then... It's up to us to get in here and read to see what God's nature is and to learn how to walk. Um, one of the biggest tools that God uses to teach us, I know, first of all, yeah, your Bible, the Holy Spirit. Be because before our ancestors could read, they had the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit led us. So even if you can't understand a passage of scripture, you ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what it means, the Holy Spirit will teach you. And so when I say uh, one of the biggest tools is the Holy Spirit speaking, it's the Holy Spirit is telling you, uh-uh, 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 slow down, slow down, don't keep driving this fast. It's the Holy Spirit that's telling you, leave them alone. Don't call them, don't do nothing else, move back. It's the Holy Spirit. You may not find those individuals' names written in the, in the Bible that says, uh, your friends, blah, 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 at this particular meeting, you don't need to attend. But what you will have is the Holy Spirit telling you, wait a minute, don't even go to the meeting. Don't even pick up the phone. So the biggest tool that I say that God uses is the Holy Spirit. So going back again to verse 1, because I got to make sure everything, I, I like the flow like that. Uh, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, when we begin to understand what God's will is for our life, it's no longer about us. Yes, you may have wanted to, <clears throat> age 30, you want to have this done and that done and this done. And you're looking at age 27 and 28 and God is telling you, no, wait, wait, wait a minute, baby. I want you to take a different route. You're saying no, but, but I had this goal ever since I was 15. No, it ain't about us. Because the truth be told, if we allow ourselves to be a living sacrifice, God will point us in the direction that he birthed us for, which will be more successful. And I'm not talking about material things. Listen. Let, let me reveal something. 
I was talking to a partner of mine today, Brother Don Gales, Donald Gales, and he was, we, 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 we have Bible study all the time on the phone. I must say, I must say, one of the biggest tricks of the devil is that the body of Christ is chasing after material things. The word of God says right off the bat, what profits a man to gain the whole world and still lose his soul? God does not want us running after material things. That beautiful house on the hill that you shall... I, I, y'all know me. Y'all know me. Just because they prophesied and said, you shall get that beautiful house on the hill in 2022. Let that garbage go. God don't care nothing about that beautiful house you got painted in your head. Our permanent home ain't even that house. Our permanent home is with him. So he could care less about you getting that beautiful house. And he will supply some things now. He'll supply all your, all, he'll supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. He can give us the beautiful house, but he don't want our hearts focused on the house. He want our hearts focused on him, which is our eternal house. Please, please, somebody let me know that makes sense. He want us focused on the things of him, of him, not the house, the Ferrari, not the Jaguar. None of that stuff matters to God. Yes, he will give you some of those things. But the problem that God has is when our heart is on those things. If it's done right, if we move by the Holy Spirit, by the time we get the house, it won't matter. By the time we get the Jaguar, we won't even drive it that much. You know why? Because the greater things is just being with God, having the things of God, walking spiritually with God, learning the spiritual things and the material thing that you wanted back when you was 15, the Jaguar, you got it and it doesn't even matter much. Why is that? Because you found the bigger goal, the bigger thing, the bigger glory was in following God. Amen? So God is not after that. So when you hear that thing, please, at some point, it should prick your spirit to say, why does God need me to be in a $200,000 car? And if somebody's saying, you shall get it. Listen, understand. God, seek, uh, let's just say, please seek God. Seek God. Not the things, God is on our genie, we don't rub him, and, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Please seek the things of God. So anyway, it says, therefore I urge you, brothers, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy. God wants us to be holy. God, mm. is it hard being holy? Yes. Yeah, I said it. It's hard being holy. How I know, why do I say it's hard being holy? Because for one, and we're going to get down in verse two, you have to renew your mind. It ain't nothing in our body off the natural side that says, I just want to be holy. But guess what? It says holy and pleasing to God. It ain't even about us. When you realize the things that God gives us, the things that God does for us, then it's not even about us no more. It's about pleasing him. Why do we go about trying to walk away from things that is poison for us? Because we want to please God. It ain't about showing nobody that I'm all of that and I don't sin no more. Use a lie. Everybody still screws up. Everybody still sins. That's why we need Jesus. So guess what? We need to be looking after the things of God. It says, holy and pleasing to God. Now, check this out. This is your spiritual act of worship. Now, I understand in the King James, it says, that is our reasonable service. Now, guess what? This is your spiritual act of worship in this one, or is your reasonable service. That is saying to me, that's the least of the requirements. God is not saying, this is not something major that, oh, man, uh, God, I can't. I don't, I don't think I can handle that. God is saying that's our reasonable service. God is saying that is your spiritual act of worship. So now, and I know somebody saying, wait a minute, man, I got far to go. Hey, we all do. 
We all do. I don't like to say, yeah, I know you do. No, we all do. Because when you look in the mirror, you see that you ain't all lining up either. Okay, not you. When I look in the mirror, I realize I ain't always lining up. Okay? So now, when I understand that, that means I have to separate myself from the world. Let's go to verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Do not be conformed to the world. It says this. Verse 2, do not be conformed any longer. Any longer. That's beautiful. I love the fact that it says any longer. Because as I said in the beginning, many of us was taught how to be worldly. And then we find out about God. And then we start reading the word of God. And we start finding out the requirements of God. Which means by this time, you've already got some bad habits. And at this time, it's like, wow, God, you really suspecting this of me. But because we are sealed with God, we're sealed by the blood of Jesus because we recognize that, Lord Jesus, I just want to please you. So now, yes, you are worth me fighting to get out of this mess that I put myself in. Did you hear that? Yes, God, you are worth me fighting to get out of the mess that I put myself in. God's holy. Jesus was holy. He's holy. He didn't put, he didn't put me in that mess. I put myself in. So now, God, because I want to honor you, I'm willing to fight to get out of this mess. All my little bad habits. All my little habits. All my little bad tendencies. I'm willing, God, because I just want to honor you. I just want to please you. I want to show the world that, God, this is possible. That you can be holy. You can come from mess and be renewed. You can renew your mind and be holy. And Jesus says, according to through Paul, this is a reasonable service. So guess what? When we are holding on to that one mess, that mess, that mess, that we like to do with the lights off, that mess. But not only are we dishonoring, but God, God was like, wait a minute, when are you going to let this go? Have you not seen what I've blessed you with? God is, listen, 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 listen. Verse 2, it says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let me tell you. Being transformed, spiritual transformation does not happen in our walk immediately. The fact of being saved, yes, as you believe, you have now received it instantaneously. But when we begin to walk out our own salvation, when we begin to renew our mind, it is a process. But God knows when our hearts is willing to let go of the garbage. See, you can't fool God. We can fool everybody else. Oh, he's so holy. He's not like what he used to be. But God looks right here and says, uh-uh, uh-uh. Oh, I know you know how to shout like the rest of them. I know you know when to say amen, but you ain't really connected to me. You're just doing it out of ritualism. And what God is going to say, hey, guess what? Come to me for real. Because he'll sit back, because he's a gentleman. God will sit back, and, and it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like, I can picture God like, you still faking, huh? You ain't got tired of faking yet? Come on, Tyrese. Come on. You let me know when you tired, Tyree, because I'm, I'm still here. God is sitting right back sitting here saying, the only person you fooling is you. So guess what? When he says, going back to verse 2, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world. Let's come out, y'all. Come. On. When we read the word of God and it tells us things that we need to be doing, let's move. Let's move. Hey, God is looking for, he's looking for us to open the door and say, God, look, I ain't strong enough to beat this thing, but with you, I am. Come in. I'll give you, I give you the room to come in. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for submission. He's looking for us to say, God, hey, I give you 
the opportunity, Lord, to clean me up. Here, here, here. That's what God is looking for. Not one of us is going to walk it out perfectly. But God knows who has willingly submitted their will for his. He's looking for submission. He's looking for us to be submissive and say, God, I know I used to like doing this. And the truth be told, I do kind of still crave it a little bit. But because of you, I'm going to honor you, God. Because of you, I'm going to fight through this. And I'm going to fight until I can't fight no more. Jesus sweated drops of blood. And I don't know about you. I have been through a lot of temptation. And I have done good in some places. And I have failed miserably in others. But guess what? Not one time have I sweated drops of blood. So we can't say that we've been tempted like Jesus. We can't say it. But you know what God is looking for? Us to be willing to say, guess what? I am getting rid of this garbage. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for us to say, God, I'm putting forward my foot to walk out according to your will. I submit my will. I pick up your will. I'm going to do what you want me to do. That's all God is looking for. And meaning, he wants us to mean it. He wants us to literally say, I'll forsake my will and pick up your will. So anyway, going back to verse 2 again, it says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? The only way you're going to renew your mind is with the word of God. Not Dr. Phil. Nothing against you, Dr. Phil. But... You can't beat this word. Not again, not nobody, not nobody but the word of God. The word of God is the only thing that's going to renew your mind. The word of God, the word of God is the only thing that's going to renew your mind to line up with God's will. I say that again. The word of God is the only thing that's going to line you up to fulfill God's will. Amen. So now listen. Somebody said, but I got this self-help book and I got that. It's nothing wrong with that. But if the self-help book says something in contrary to the word of God, you need to go with the word of God. So that's why I say you need to go to the word of God and line up with him. And if you want to, if you like reading self-help books, that's fine. Ain't knocking that. But let the word of God be the thing that you really renew your mind off of. You find out what God wants. And you say, God, okay, woo, I got a lot of work in that area. God, but I need you to help me. Amen. Because when you go, you got to be careful when you go pick up a book off the shelf and begin to read it. Because you don't know their spiritual walk with the Lord. And so they could be telling you a whole lot of stuff that sounds good, but it's based all in worldly thoughts. And none of those worldly thoughts is going to please God. None of those worldly thoughts is going to please God. I gotta say it one more time. None of those worldly formulas, worldly thoughts is going to please God. Amen. So again, it says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Listen, that verse right there. I don't know if you've ever tried it God's way. Trying it God's way don't always feel good. But if you've ever tried it God's way, and then at the end of the trial, you see the success that it brought, and it brought by it brought tremendous more success doing it God's way than your way that you've always done it. Or mama them way, or cutting them, I ain't say cousin, cutting them way. No, you tried it their way a bunch of times, and it only brought a little bit of success. But when you tried it God's way, and it was like, boom! Guess what? You have now tested, what it say? Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. When you do it God's way, and you look back at the results of that thing, yes, I can go cuss them out because they cuss me out. But, but the fact that I held my peace, and I just looked at them, At the end of it, they feel like a fool. And they come back and apologize to you for going off. But if you had a gone right back off, don't think you would have ever got that apology. And don't think you would have ever got your respect back. 
Because if you're a child of God and you get to going off on somebody, and I'm going to tell you, and your head is, guess what they're going to remember? You have just now erased the godliness off. And the only thing that they're going to remember, you weren't acting real godly yesterday when you were telling me off. But if you held your peace and you just sat there, they'll see at the end of it, they said, man, God, please forgive me because that brother, that sister, she didn't even say nothing back. She didn't deserve that. God, please help me. I need some help in this area. And they'll begin to look in the mirror. And it all came behind you renewing your mind. And allowing God's will to take control instead of your old natural, your old nature, your old self that would have just went from zero to 100 and lost it. Amen. It's that simple. That's how you and I test and approve. That's how. And it says here what God's will is. His good, pleasing and perfect will. Everything that God has required out of us, y'all, I promise you. It has so much more success. And again, I say, I'm not talking about degrees on the wall. And if God is leading you to do that, I'm not telling you not to do that. But I'm not telling you material things is, is the way to measure your success. Me and my, being a, my, my friend today, brother in Christ, like I said, I mean, we was just talking about that. Riches don't mean money. And we, for some reason, because of the worldly stuff, because of the worldly concept that you and I as, as the children of God have just gravitated to when you say rich the only thing we think about is money but what about being rich in the spirit of God what about being rich in the knowledge of God like me here was talking about Solomon Solomon did not ask for riches and it said that Solomon because Solomon you did not ask for riches I will bless you with the wisdom of God. That's what Solomon asked for. He asked for the wisdom of God. The wisdom and the knowledge on how to how to lead the people of God. That's what Solomon asked for. And but Solomon had everything. Guess why? Because he was not chasing rich, the, the material things. He was chasing God. And it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. So by Solomon just tested and approved because what he did, he said, I didn't ask you. I didn't want to ask you for uh, 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 another mansion. I didn't ask you for that, Lord. I wanted the wisdom and knowledge of you, God. So because Solomon, you asked of those things. Now I can give you those things and the material things because I now know you know what to do with them. Please understand. That's why renewing our minds is so important. Because literally, all we've ever learned was the more material we got, the more blessed we are. That's not the case. Seeking God and the things of God is how we are truly blessed. God will take care of the material things. I know what you need. I'll give you even some of your wants, but I'm not going to give it to you until you're able to handle it. Amen? Y'all, we have to renew our minds. We have to. Because you and I are walking underneath our means as children of God if we haven't renewed our minds. If we're still chasing the same stuff the world chasing, you and I are not beneficial to the kingdom of God here on earth. We are the salt of the earth. And if you ever mix salt and pepper together, you can easily see the salt. And back in the day, salt was used. And, you know, I know we don't have pack houses and all that stuff anymore. Salt savored the meat. It made the meat last longer. Well, we are the salt of the earth. We are supposed to be different. We are supposed to walk according to God. And it's only going to come if we renew our mind. It's only going to come when we become submissive enough to say, God, not my will, not my will, but your will be done. That's what that is talking about. When I begin to say, God, I know what I want for me, but it ain't even about what I want. God, what is your will? I want your will to be done. Your will is so much better for me than my will. That's what that, that, that is really meaning. That is what that verse really means. Amen. 
So I say to you all tonight, we're about to close. We're going to pray again and we're going to close. That be willing to let God in. Every area of your life. Be willing to shut your will down and let God will take place. Be willing to renew your mind. Be willing to drop bad habits. Be willing to let God into that area where that bad habit is and say, God, clean it up for me. Be willing to walk away from it. I don't care if you got to walk away from it 15 times in an hour. God sees your tenacity. God sees your determination. God's watching you. And if the 16th time you fall flat on your face, get up and fight again. He died for the falls. Jesus died for the falls. Ask him to forgive you. Get up. Brush off the dirt. And let's get ready to fight again. That's how we become warriors for Christ. Amen. God is expecting that. He said that is our reasonable service. Because can you imagine. If every child of God. Walked in the power of God. Jesus Christ said, greater things shall we do. We can't get there if we still playing and back and worldly. But can you imagine if we imagine just 30 of us that lives in the same community, walking out with the power of God, binding devils, binding demons, laying hands on the sick and they recover. People getting saved. People on the street, the other folks just turn their nose up. You walk by and pray for them and they change their life to God. Imagine if 30 of us that lived in the community was willing to say, God, for you I live. For I'm only here for you. I'm only here for you. Not my will. I'm here because you got me here for a purpose and I submit my will to yours. It's more Christians than 30 of us. If you really want to see the things of God in your life, submit your will and pick up God's will. Be ye holy, for he is holy. Walk in the holiness of God. Ask, spend time with, practice renewing your mind. Fight, do it. You know your bad habits better than any other person. The only other person to know you better than you is God. And you say, man, this is overwhelming. When I really look at myself in the mirror, this is overwhelming. God, help me needs to be your next statement. And he will. He's waiting on us. You know, I was reading the scripture and I cannot quote it right now, which one it was. But it says that all of nature is waiting on the children of God to take our rightful place. That means the birds of the air are waiting for us to take our rightful place as true children of God to know who we really are in, in Jesus Christ. The whole world is waiting on us to stand up and walk with the power and anointing of God. Do you realize, and I'm going to say this, and then we're going to go into prayer, I think. There's 12 disciples, but Jesus Christ and 12 disciples, and I know we're talking about Judas, so, you know, Judas, and that's a whole nother thing, uh, you know, and I'm going to just hit this real quick. Jesus knew who Judas was. Jesus knew Judas the entire time, but Jesus never did, and many of us are so ah, protective over our money. I, God gave me this, and I, I pray, I'm not going to stay here long, I don't anticipate, but Jesus... Jesus knew Judas the entire time, but Jesus was, Judas was the treasurer of the, for the disciples. He was the treasurer for Jesus Christ and Jesus knew where Judas heart was. Some of us are so crazy about a dollar that we, oh, you, you can't touch my money. No, you ain't, you ain't. But look at the example of Jesus. He knew what Jesus, what Judas was doing, but not one time did he fire Judas. Not one time did he even make a statement about Judas and handling the money. So why are we so wrapped up about, 
I ain't, I ain't giving them my money. I, I ain't doing it. I, I don't know what they do. I, I don't know what. I, mm, they ain't touch. You ain't, you ain't gonna know my bank account. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna. The perfect example is Jesus Christ. He knew everything about Judas. He knew what Judas was gonna do. But he didn't fire him. He let him go ahead. So listen. Going back to what I was saying before. Eleven disciples. Do you realize Jesus and them 11 disciples impacted an entire world? Do you realize Jesus Christ and them disciples impacted their region so much that it spread it from one country to the next country to the next country? And here you and I, all the way over here to the other side of the world, if you're in the United States of America, Canada, or Mexico, and we still impacting people, but it started with Jesus Christ and the 11 disciples. And he said, greater things shall we do. Let's stand up. Let's walk. But let's walk with the power of God. See, guess what? You and I got to stop being so sensitive. I need you. I don't need nobody. <laughs> I, don't need... I need you. I need you praying for me. I need you praying for me. I need you praying for me. I need you praying for your brothers and sisters. I need you when I'm falling short. I need you to say, Minister Balls, Ty Ty <laughs> Tyrese, get it together. Some of us are so tight. Who are you trying to? Why are you judging me? What? See, guess what? I'm going to tell you something because that's a worldly statement. If I'm telling you what's in the Bible, I ain't judging you. God had already put it out there. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Amen? Stop being so sensitive, y'all. Please, we got to get this thing. We, the devil has all of those as, as blocks to keep us, to slow us down from being who God called us to be. Now, you don't tell me what to do. Boom. So you now you live 30 years now you don't want nobody to tell you what to do. So now you can't even grow. You can't even fulfill the purpose God got in your life because somebody got to tell you something in order for us to learn. So we can be effective to the body. But you walk around with a chip on your shoulder and nobody tell you nothing. Devil happy. I ain't got to worry about him for, for a while. We have to see the, the tactics of the devil. That's the things that he do. That's the, that's the stuff that he's doing. So guess what? We have to be wiser. We have to literally get in this word because I promise you through, through God, he's already laid all those things out. He's always told, he's already told us how we ought to operate. So when the devil start doing stuff like that, don't nobody tell me what to do. They understand that we're walking in arrogance. We're walking in pride and none of that is of God. So we need to check ourselves. Shut that down. Devil lost again. Amen. So let's go into prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for your word on tonight. I thank you, God, for teaching us spiritual transformation. I thank you, God, for yet again giving us more tools so that we can be warriors for you. I thank you, God, for breaking it clear, just breaking it really, really clear, God. Lord, let this thing right here, don't let it fall on the ground. Don't let these seeds fall on the ground, but God, let it nourish our spirit so that we can grow and represent you here. That's why you got us here. God, I thank you. Let everyone that you have ordained to hear this word, let them hear it, let them prick their spirit, and let us grow from it. And I thank you, God. I count it done, and I just thank you, God, for the opportunity once again to be used by you. Thank you. We love you, Lord. Thank you, 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 thank you for all that you do. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You all, get in your word, dig in your word, dig in your word, dig in your word harder than you dig into your favorite meal. Dig in it. And let's grow. Let us represent Jesus Christ here on this earth. Let's please him. Because that's what it's about. Amen. Greater things shall we do. The only way we're going to do it is if we walk this thing out. Amen. I love you. See you next week. Unless God got it otherwise. Because I will be obedient. If you tell me to log on Sunday, I'll be here Sunday. Amen. Love y'all. Goodbye.